Hey guys, welcome to Motor Rides. My name is Amit and this is the new 2020 KTM RC390. Arguably one of the most exciting street motorcycles on sale in India right now. And in the 2022 Avatar, it has seen a slew of changes and it has translated into a lot of improvements in performance and feature additions as well. Now, to start off, I will take off by talking about the performance of this motorcycle first because as you can see this motorcycle is strikingly similar to the RC200 which was launched some time back and if you look at the overall design of this motorcycle it's almost identical except for the paint schemes the wheels the suspension the chassis the seats the tank almost everything is identical so let's start off with what really matters the most and that's the performance on this motorcycle to start with the engine is more or less the same but the performance in terms of the specs is a little different now and, and while the peak power is the same at 43.5 PS the peak torque has increased by 1 Newton meters at 37 Newton meters now and not just that the tractability also has improved to some extent not phenomenally it's not like it's become a very very tractable motorcycle but compared to the version that it replaces it is more usable on the road. Now we rode in on this track for a good half an hour and our understanding of the motorcycle was primarily about its high speed performance and in that sense there are a few things that you need to know first that curved radiator that you first saw on the KTM RC200 is here but it has an additional fan so the cooling capacity uh, has increased by about 10% this motorcycle also breathes with a 40% bigger airbox so the air breathing capability is better and that obviously leads to slightly better performance and apart from that the better overall output in terms of torque has also helped the performance but the big news here is the focus that KTM has put on weight savings and the weight savings again are somewhat identical to what we saw earlier on the RC200 but just to let you know how a lot of things have changed to improve the performance I'll just reiterate all of those things because I think all of these things have a bearing on the motorcycle's uh, performance per se so the wheels here are all new they are lighter by 1.1 kgs both front and rear the discs are now lighter and they're lighter uh, together by about 1.1 kgs the subframe here is new and as you can see it's a bolt-on unit and it has its advantages in terms of painting it in a contrast color like you see right now in terms of repair costs and also while the company is transporting parts so that's the reason uh, for this subframe to be uh, built the way it is so that's again a newness but this actually adds to the weight somewhat however despite uh, its added weight the overall weight of the motorcycle has gone down by 3.1 kgs that's a dry weight mind you because the tank here is now bigger and the tank capacity here is now 13.7 as opposed to 9.5 liters earlier so 4.2 liters of extra storage but despite that the dry weight that is without the fluids is now down by 3.1 kgs although if you look at the curb weight the curb weight is uh, actually 1 kg more because you'll add 4.2 liters of extra fuel to this tank so please remember that so overall the performance has improved uh, and weight savings have also been done in the front axle which is uh, now lighter wheel hubs as you can see are now hollow and the seat here which by the way is more comfortable and allows more space for you to move around is also now uh, lighter so all of those things have added to the weight savings and thanks to all of that the 0 to 60 acceleration timing of this bike has come down from 3.2 seconds to a blistering quick 2.7 seconds now that's an improvement of 0.5 seconds and for 0 to 100 the difference is a massive from 7.1 seconds to 6.3 seconds so that in a nutshell is a big improvement the BS6 version was somewhat strangulated and this has opened out again so the acceleration is something which is better and you can feel that now, apart from that another improvement that KTM is stating is in terms of tractability well I really believe that the tractability is not the best out there I still believe that the RR310 has better tractability but the tractability here by itself has improved and if you go to see in the sixth gear you can now drive this motorcycle from 60 kilometers onwards in the fifth gear 50 kilometers onwards and in the fourth gear you would be able to drive it from 40 to 43 kilometers onwards without any stutter sputter or the engine knocking you essentially have to keep the engine about 3500 rpm and from there on from 5000 onwards you really get a very smooth sense while you're ringing a throttle below that there is still a little bit of spluttering 
and from that point onwards until 8000 rpm there is a strong surge uh, in power which is a strong mid range but the real power kicks in after 8000 rpm and just hurls this motorcycle into the upper excellence of its rev range all the way to 10500 rpm which is where the limiter cuts in now since i'm talking about gear speeds while ktm does not agree i think that the gearing on this motorcycle felt a little bit different to me as compared to the duke 390 and here i saw a speedo indicated speed of 99 kilometers per hour the third gear 125 kilometers per hour in the fourth gear 153 kilometers per hour in the fifth gear and surprisingly i saw a very high top speed of 165 kilometers per hour in the sixth gear on this bike which is uh, a little more than what I saw the last time. So the overall performance seems to have improved. But if you compare those speeds with that of the Duke, the gearing in the third and fourth gear seems to be slightly higher. That motorcycle reaches 104 kilometers per hour in the third gear, which is like crossing 100. And in the fourth gear also, I saw a speed of 129 kilometers per hour. The top speed there was slightly lower though. Another important aspect associated with performance is touring. And in that context, 100 kilometers per hour is achieved at 6,000 RPM. At 7,000 RPM, you'll be doing 120 kilometers per hour on the speedo. And at 8,000 RPM, you'll be doing about 136 kilometers per hour, but still two and a half thousand RPM to go. So it's a good cruising machine. And you can actually, if the limits permit you, 140 to 145 kilometers per hour is very, very sustainable on this motorcycle. Another important question is the fuel efficiency. And the fuel efficiency doesn't seem to have changed much, although I cannot say definitely as to what the real world fuel efficiency would be, but looking at uh, the numbers on the speedo or the uh, instrument console uh, the numbers are decimal because uh, we kept the throttle completely pinned all the time but my understanding is still that this motorcycle is going to deliver between 25 to 30 kmpl uh, as a mix of city and highway riding although we'll give you the final number once we test this motorcycle in the real world so that's about the performance guys and it indeed is one of the best performing motorcycles in the segment but that is about the engine and the top speed and most of the things that have to do with the drivetrain a lot of other stuff has also changed and uh, most of it has to do with how this motorcycle handles how it feels so the first part of the equation is of course how it feels when you ride it and in that sense now as you can see the ride angle is not as committed and as compared to the international version here you have the handlebar up by about 14.5 mm and you can actually lower it down by uh, that number if you really so wish but for the indian commuter the riding triangle is not as committed and it doesn't really feel uh, like uh, the previous KTM RC 390 and it does feel slightly better to ride and I really think that it would make a difference to people who wanted a little bit more comfort. The seat by itself has now 50% more foam and uh, the weight also on the entire seat panel has been reduced. The seat is wider, it allows for better movement of the rider and it is more comfortable also. The foam quality is a little better. Now the seat height remains unchanged at 835 mm and as you can see me being 5 feet 10 my heels are just about touching the ground, so it's not the most suitable motorcycle for the shorter ones amongst you. And if you're anything shorter than 5 feet 7 or 8, you will probably have a bit of a trouble, especially if you're going to be uh, pushing the motorcycle along. So that's something that you really have to be careful about. Now from the rider's perspective, another big change is this beautiful color TFT display, which is obviously fantastic, looks amazing. And a look at this would essentially let you know that this motorcycle now comes with some really good electronics and a few things that were missing have been included and those primarily include an IMU sensor. So an initial uh, moment unit has been incorporated here. This motorcycle comes with cornering ABS as well as traction control. So that important bit of uh, electronics has been rightfully uh, bestowed upon this motorcycle and I really believe that's a fantastic uh, safety feature. So congratulations to KTM for that. Apart from that, uh, this instrument console is also a lot richer and can be connected uh, via Bluetooth uh, with KTM MyRide app. And while you can get notifications for uh, messages and incoming calls and for music, this won't help you in turn by turn navigation. So that's a limitation and that's one feature that we really would have wanted uh, KTM to increase here. Now, the switch gear here to control uh, this system is also obviously a little different. And as you can see, you have speedo, you have uh, 
a taco and you have a fuel gauge, temperature gauge, all of those is there. It lets you know which uh, ABS mode you are using because it comes with a super motor mode where you can switch the rear ABS off if you so wish. And apart from that, you also get a lot of uh, critical data. And as I can see right now, it shows me a lot of readings including uh, the fuel range and average fuel efficiency. So all of those things are available here and it is quite an exhaustive instrument console now. The switchgear quality is decent, not the best, but this is not something that I can fault. And overall, the view from here is that of, of being aboard a very, very premium motorcycle. This triple clamp is new. You have this engine kill switch here, electric startup button, this switchgear for controlling the instrument console, turn indicators, horn, and these twin toggles for high beam, low beam, and flasher. Your levers are also adjustable which is fantastic and now these mirrors are also wider to allow a better view of what's happening behind you not just that these are also foldable now so just in case you are traversing through a goat gully where you don't have enough space these mirrors will not break and will be safer so that's another good inclusion the pillion seat as you can see is quite high and this obviously won't be suitable for long distance rides as a pillion. However, for short rides, it's okay. The grab rails are more stylish and more functional too. And it would definitely help uh, the pillion rider to plant themselves uh, more surely on the seat. The lights here are exactly the same as the RC200. And this big bulbous screen, as you have seen before as well, may not be the most beautiful. In fact, the previous RC390 looked sharper. But this one is inspired from the RC16 MotoGP motorcycle, a race motorcycle. So it cuts through the air better. The coefficient of uh, aerodynamics is a little better here. So you have LED lighting here, LED blinkers here, this LED DRL here. And you also get LED blinkers as well as an all LED tail light. In terms of paneling, the graphics and the panels here are also completely new. And if you look at these panels, they go further down. The graphics here are different and it also gets these little bubbles, which I'm not personally a big fan of, but they do look nice to quite a few of you. The exhaust here is again new. And since I'm talking about the exhaust, I must let you know that this sounds quite nice. Not the best sounding exhaust, but not bad either. It comes with an engine inhibitor. So if the side stand is engaged, the engine is not going to turn on. Let's turn that engine on and see how the exhaust sounds. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that there is a mesh at the end of this canister and you also have this heat shield to protect the legs of the person who's sitting as pillion. You also have this hugger to protect the pillion as well as the riders coming behind from the splash in the rains. Ground clearance here is 153 mm, which should be fine as long as you are taking it out on paved streets. Although if you want to take it out even for soft roading, you have to be extremely careful because this panel goes quite low and taking it above uh, high stones is not recommended at all. You have medzellers up front and at the rear, 110 and 150 section. The grip here on this track was more than sufficient and I really believe that these are some of the better tires, although they are not the softest of the compounds. So there are better medzellers also available, but these are more than sufficient and provide much needed longevity on our roads. So in that sense, this is a very good choice. Rear suspension is five step adjustable and now since we are talking about the suspension let me also let you know that the travel on the suspension front and rear has been increased in order to cope with the bad Indian roads and provide the much needed comfort that is required on uh, Indian roads. So the suspension travel up front is 130 mm which is up by 10 mm and at the rear the suspension travel is 165 mm up from 148 mm earlier. The wheels here are also supposed to be stronger and will take care of the adversities uh, thrown in by the Indian roads more ably. The weight distribution has also changed now and as opposed to 53 is to 47 uh, which was the case before now it's 52 is to 48 which means that the weight is more evenly distributed up front and at the rear. Now another problem that this motorcycle uh, had at least for a few people was it heated up more than that they desired it to and for that the engine obviously uh, has better cooling systems. The radiator as I mentioned is bigger. The air is fed into the radiator better, so the airflow is better and it has two fans, so 
the engine should not heat up as it used to. It's quite a hot day today and despite keeping the engine completely on the boil all the time, I did not see any danger signs on uh, the temperature gauge. This bracket that you see here is also new for the Pillion Riders foot peg. Another change is the wheelbase which is now longer by only 6 mm and it should not have much bearing on the handling of this motorcycle. I'm going to come to that in a bit but the wheelbase has indeed changed by a small margin. Another thing to consider is the fact that this tank is all metallic and the battery has been shifted here for easy access just like the RC200. The motorcycle also as I mentioned comes with a quick shifter which can be used very easily without clutch for both up and down shifts although it does take a little bit of effort and it doesn't shift in the slickest of the manners. About vibrations you must probably have a question about the vibrations as well and in terms of vibrations during the lower revs it has a tendency to splutter and knock and only after 5000 rpm it smoothens out it's a single and only when it really is in its element that's above seven and a half eight thousand rpm does that motorcycle feel like there's absolutely no vibe during the uh, mid revs you can feel mild vibes which are obviously not something that you should be bothered about but you do feel some mild vibes at low to mid revs uh, on your foot pegs which i really believe is not something that should bother you now Finally coming to the ride and handling part of this motorcycle and I kept this bit for the last because I knew that had I said it up front you probably wouldn't have understood all the amazing changes that this motorcycle has gone through and as we know the RC390 was known for its relatively stiff ride and a few other problems that the motorcycle had was its relatively harsh character and the amount of heat that it dissipated. So heat for this kind of motorcycle, there would be slightly more heat emanated from the engine from normal. You have to live with that. But uh, having said that, heat management is a lot better now and you won't be roasting your calves anymore. Uh, even on such a hot day on the track, the motorcycle did not throw any signs of being overheated, which is a very, very good sign. Apart from that, the ride stiffness has also been somewhat addressed with the increased uh, suspension travel and the suspension itself feels slightly less firm too although still from an everyday motorcycle perspective this is still slightly on the firmer side now this motorcycle is still on the softer side and we had no problem whatsoever taking it around this track obviously had I dialed it up a little bit the handling would have been a little better but I did not find any problem carrying the speed through the technical curves that we have here it uh, bends down easily it you can pick it up very easily. Of course, the weight here is more than the Duke 200, the power is more. So for this kind of a technical circuit, if you compare with a motorcycle like the Duke 200, which has a lot less power and more or less the same hardware, that motorcycle feels a lot easier to throw around. So the power here and the weight makes it slightly more difficult to goad and uh, make it the way you want it to go at speed especially. But compared with the other motorcycles in the segment, I really believe that the KTM RC390 is one of the finest track tools, which also translates into one of the finest handling motorcycles on the street as well. So if you're someone who loves riding on the street, especially if you like going corner carving, this motorcycle is something that is going to delight you completely. The slightly better mid-range talk is also going to delight you because now it's not as peak revs hungry as it used to be earlier. The suspension here not the most comfortable but still more absorbent and uh, a little better than before. But in terms of its road manners, in terms of the way it handles, impeccable and you cannot really fault this motorcycle for what it's expected to do. Now that brings us to the final part of this review which obviously is going to be the conclusion which obviously has to include the price also and while there are a lot of changes the price here has increased significantly by 36,000 rupees you heard it right and now this motorcycle retails at 3.14 lakh rupees x showroom and even at that price it does come across as good value because the closest motorcycle that you have here is the Ninja 300 and that still is more expensive with about 4.5 PS less and about 11 Newton meters less at 3.37 lakh rupees, that motorcycle is still 23,000 rupees more expensive than this. The next motorcycle that you have here as a competition is the RR310, which retails for 2.65 lakh rupees, but the performance differential there is quite a lot. If you don't want to go all out, that motorcycle is more usable on the road and has riding modes, also comes with some nifty features. So that's something that you should probably consider if you're not going for all out performance. The Duke 390 is also available as an alternative with pretty much the same performance but at a lesser price and you'll have to pay about 20,000 rupees less for the Duke itself. About the colors, you have two colors to choose from and this one here with this really beautiful matte dark navy blue kind of a shade is a new inclusion and the other color has black in places of the blue that you have here and you can choose from the two colors. This one looks a little special 
and there's not really much difference in the two motorcycles when you look at it from a distance but when you come close you do realize that this is uh, a slightly more special color so that was that guys i really hope that just the way we always do i was able to cover everything that you wanted to know about this motorcycle and if you like high quality in depth really really proper reviews i request you to hit that like button subscribe to motoroids and more than anything search for us because we don't want to depend on anyone to show us to you you need to watch what you want and the choice always is yours i really hope that this review was of some use to you and until next time this is your friend amit changani signing off rev hard rev free and ride safe